the question is something like, uh, if it, it's not you said, I don't know, <laughs> uh, about feeling, um, it's not in the feeling, but it comes with the feeling. Uh, um, it's, it's kind of love is what you're looking for which is kind of a feeling and not, it's a sense, it's love. Not the feeling, conditioned feeling when you fall in love with someone, but love, this sense of presence. It's sense, it's known. And in all your actions, that's what you're looking for, is that sense of being. And you could call it love, that feeling of love, because in that feeling of love, it's really close. It's not quite the feeling of love that you have personally with people, but it's really close to that. Mm -hmm. It's that sense of love, of completion, of wholeness that you have when you love something, when you look at a baby and you suddenly are in awe, or you see a dog playing or a puppy playing, or you see people laughing or something, or when you fall in love, but when you fall in love it comes with lots of pleasure as well, so that's a little different, but it's that sense of presence, of home, so you're looking for the feeling of love, but that's still you with a feeling of love that's not quite it, but it is, it's kind of there, that's kind of similar. That's what so you're... It's, it's always maybe the memory gets in the way yeah. of, of so-called experiences. Yeah. Uh, Do you feel this sense of I am now? I'm not good with I am. <laughs> I feel presence. Yes. Yeah, presence, okay. Presence. Yeah. And and the and the presence like even though it might feel very dimmed because it's really focused on the person that's got a life moving in time, that presence you could say a quality of it is love. It's this awakeness. At the moment, it's so much. Um, other, sensations. other sensations. Yeah. Yeah. But its presence is there too. Yeah. And have you noticed that your whole life you've been looking for it? Can you feel that? At least the last years, I know. Yeah. It feels like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hard to remember these things. And the reason why it's so important is because you'll play such bizarre games as a separate person trying to look for it, and these games will lead to suffering because you'll look in the wrong place. You'll look in people being a certain way, in always having pleasure, in certain events happening, in having holidays that look like paradise or or being a certain way, or people behaving a certain way, whereas really all of these things are pleasure and pain. But while you believe that love is anger and all emotions, there is a natural flow to them, but they become super intensified when you believe that, that presence is found in an object. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is when you know, the suffering and the worry and the anxiety can last for days, weeks, years, because you believe that home is found in time. And through that belief, on the negative side, you, you, on the back side, you encourage all the negativity. So you encourage the worry, the anxiety, because you're always trying to get it, and you're always having the sensation, I'm getting something wrong. So there's this will going. And it's not that, that human feelings have to go. Human feelings are an important part of being human. But they become so intense when you believe presence is there. And so my job is to point out the presence, so the non-dual side, and now I've taken it on to be my job more to really point out to people what they're doing, mm -hmm. like on the personal level what they're doing. I love, I want to say that too, is I love so much that you're all the time, like every day since we're here, you say presence, presence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah. It's so good and because... Yeah. So obviously there is a resonance then, a really strong resonance with it. That, so it's beginning to become known. And the more it becomes known, the less energy will go into those games that you play in time. 
And then at the same time, what also happens, well, the knowing is being remembered. You also see what you've been playing your whole life, the game you've been playing, and the way the mind works. It starts as a young child and it picks up information. Okay, so when I'm good, that means I get, yeah, they love me. And the love, that love is presence. The mind associates presence with they love me, that feeling of presence. I think I always looked for being loved. Yeah. Like, uh, because I felt not loved. Yeah. Or still feel often not loved. Mm. And then uh, I always wanted yeah. love from other people. <laughs> yeah. So what happened in the beginning was you separated. You're not even conscious of this. There's no memory of it. So there was this awakeness, this presence everywhere. The separation happened, and then the story that began to run, maybe because the mother or father didn't give you enough attention, or they could have given you too much. It could have gone either way. But your mind associated, they don't love me. But actually what it was, was God doesn't love me. That was the initial feeling, was that you'd been rejected by that presence. Then your mind projected it on to others. So your mind projects that, that others don't love you, when really it's you feel deep down yourself as God, as wholeness, doesn't love you. Yourself has rejected yourself. So actually you're in war with yourself. Yeah, it's a feeling of I'm wrong. Yeah, something. yeah. And really the true feeling that underneath all the stories that run, and they're all based on the same story, is that you feel like you've betrayed yourself. You lost your lover, which was presence. When separation happened, you feel like you lost something. Oh, they, they have a generator. We're in one of the rich hotels. <laughs> so we'll come back on. <laughs> um, this is not conscious, what you said. You know, so, yeah, that's what you feel. That's why in Christianity it's the original sin. Because you feel like you've, it's, it's really happens really quickly because there isn't a divided, I get so excited. <laughs> Here it comes. And Tanya's like, oh God, she's moving again. <laughs> well, the good, I bought a thing that doesn't really move, like a, what's this called? Like a stand. <laughs> Um, so, okay, I, I just wish I could just go, boom. <laughs> Maybe I can. Boom. <laughs> so, there isn't division here. There isn't a divide. So the only thing that can divide is the mind. So separation comes with language. So separation... Um, started when the language started in the brain, when that area in the brain started at one or two years old. And the way that you, it happens is you divide. It's nothing, it's all you. It's all the separate you that divides. So you suddenly see yourself. So there is yourself and you've lost yourself. So in your brain, the first thing that happens is there is a wholeness, then you divide. One, one, of, one of the divisions is the world, is the outside world, and the other division is you, but it's your brain that's done it. There isn't a division between world and you. So your brain has created an external world, which is one half of you as the separate person, and then the internal world, which is one half of you. And then in the external world, you, reject, you project that people take things away from you, so they don't love you enough. But it's your world, it's your reality. And how do I <laughs> reverse it? <laughs> it's in everything. Your mind feels like it's divided, but it never is. It's like that external and the internal are the same thing. You think I'm outside of you, but that's your mind that's divided. I am you, and you are me. It's so beautiful. So the healing is that yourself heals yourself. So your apparent external self is guiding you home. But there is no divide, there is no external world, and there is no internal world to guide home. But in your divided reality, that's what seems to happen. And that home is presence, is what's already here. 
So really, really, there's nobody waking up nobody. There's nobody really here. It's just your mind at a young age divided inside, outside. And there was never that. There was never inside, outside. But it's so tricky because I can hear some of your minds all going, hang on, there is definitely an inside, outside. Look, Lisa, Jesus, you're in denial. <laughs> 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 she's in the Advaita trap, get her out! <laughs> but I promise you there is an inside-outside. There is presence. And then with these instruments, they're, in order to function, they, they see things, they invent things, so they say table. Whereas to Khaleesi, this isn't a table, this is just as it is. This isn't floor, it is as it is. I understand that. Yeah. So it's all mind-made, the division. Yeah. But it's so real. It becomes so real because it's like that. Yeah. And then you're saying, how can you say that I'm not that, which is what I can see? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's right. <laughs> it becomes so close, your sense of being something. But if there's no thought, then it's, it's easy to... Imagine. Sort of, but it is a really but, yeah, energetic sense yeah. as well. Yeah. But yeah, it's sort of, if I say to everyone, like, take out thought, and who are you, then, it, then it's... If you don't think about who you are, then sometimes it can evoke that sense of presence. But it's, it's an energetical, it's an embodied sense. There's been so many years invested in it, it really feels like there is something in here. And this reality is like so close that you're in here and that the world is out there. Mm -hmm. Amazing. <laughs>